Okay, now that we have a bit know what and I hope that I've been you know doing a, a decent job explaining to you about the hydrostatic force on the plane surface and incline one, okay, the direction, the magnitude and location, and we know that you know the center of pressure does not align with the centroid. Now it's time to look at a certain problem, okay? And I have cleverly called that problem an example, okay, which is the example over here. So you know, you go to, to a certain dam, so you will normally see a, a certain shaft, okay, a certain shaft like so that is uh, mounted by a pin like that, the shaft will open up, okay. So, the problem is that we got a certain shaft that is in a dam, okay, all this is water over here, is water over here like so, okay, and basically it's as easy as it finding the magnitude and the location of the hydrostatic force acting on the shaft over there, okay, and once we are, we are, we are done with that, we want to find the moment of the force about the shaft, okay. Now the shaft, if I again how to turn it this way, is basically just a circular disc, okay, where there's a certain rod that, that, that holds it in place, okay, and it's 4 meters in, in diameter, okay, it's a circular gate, okay, the shaft is holding the gate, it's 4 meters in diameter, and the specific weight of the liquid we're dealing with is 9.80 kilo, um, kilonewtons per meter cube, or sorry, meters to the power to the uh, minus 3. Okay, it's a problem, and let's just see what we have, okay. Magnitude and the location of force. Now, what did we say about the, the magnitude of the force? Again, we can simply implement the formula FR is equal to the specific weight HC area. Okay, now we also had a discussion why are we using HC as in the height of the, the centroid, the vertical height. Well, we also can use YC, okay, in, 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 if there's such a case, okay, we will need to use the, the trigon trigonometry uh, angles. But the reason why this formula is in HC is because it's more convenient to really express certain problems because, like, this problem is telling us the vertical height immediately. So we know the vertical height immediately, so we can write 9.80. Okay, kilo newtons per meter, uh, meters to the negative three multiplied by HC, which in this case is 10. Okay, again, I say the vertical height of the centroid, which is given as 10 meters, multiplied by the area. The area is pi r squared, so r in this case is 2, so it'll be 4 pi, okay, which is equals to, um, sorry, 1.2. 2, 3 mega newtons. There, there we go. As easy as finding the hydrostatic force, we just apply the formula, that's it. There we go, there we have it. So now, the location of the force, where things get a little bit interesting, okay, and you need to do some calculations, okay. Now, what do we again say about the location of the force? The location of force is given by the center of pressure, and the center of pressure are given by the formulas which kind of relate the moment of inertia and the product of inertia, which I will just write both of them down. XR is equal to, okay, the product of inertia divided by the y coordinate of centroid multiplied by the area plus the x coordinate of the centroid, okay, and uh, y y coordinate of the center of pressure is equals to the moment of inertia, okay, about the x-axis, okay, and passing through the centroid, multiplied by the y coordinate of the centroid, sorry, divided by the y coordinate of the centroid, multiplied by the area, plus, okay, it would be yc, the y coordinate of the centroid, okay. Two key formulas that we can, we should inculcate or we should uh, assimilate in our minds when dealing with fluid mechanics problems, okay. Now, XR, XR we can leave that one side, okay. It's not a problem because due to the circular disc, okay, that is symmetry, we really know that XR is already like two, sorry, the XR is like two meters over here, okay. It doesn't really matter because firstly, the gate is gonna rotate this way, okay. And secondly, due to symmetry, in the y coordinate, in the, sorry, in the x axis, okay, it, it, we are not taking a reference point. If, if, we, if we extend this out and, you know, the reference point is here, obviously we need to calculate the, the x coordinate of the center of pressure, but we don't need that because there's no reference point. What is more important is the y coordinate of the center of pressure, okay? Now, I would use the immediate results. Now, if, I think when handling engineering or uh, fluid mechanics problems, there's a certain table of results, okay? The moment of inertia of a circular disk, okay, of, of, of an axis passing through the centroid is given by, okay, the um, rotating about the x-axis and rotating about the y-axis is the same and is given as pi r4 divided by 4, okay? This is a standard result, okay? So using this standard result, we can immediately write that the y-coordinate of the center of pressure is equals to, okay, we will get pi divided by 4 
uh, multiplied by r to the power of 4, to the 4, right? So it'll be like this, divided by the y coordinate of the centroid. Now, how do we get the y coordinate, the coordinate of the centroid? Remember, the y axis is going this way, okay? So we just simply extend this out and make it 60 degrees over here, right? So we want to find this distance over here given the, the vertical distance of the centroid, okay? So you just using basic trigonometry, you can see it's 10 divided by sine 60. Okay, now we need to multiply that by the area. The area again is 4 pi. Okay, we need to add now the y coordinate of the centroid, which is basically the same as this thing over here. Okay, sine 60. Okay, now here is where the, the inconvenient part comes because if we are given the, the height, the vertical distance of the centroid, this is where we need to do some manipulation to find the y coordinate of the centroid. But it's fair, fair enough to say that we normally just need one, the vertical distance or the, the y distance, okay? In this case, we got the vertical distance. So this would give us, okay, one, sorry, 11.6 meters, okay? So taking this as the reference point, we go all the way down, okay? We will get, okay, 11.6 meters to the center of pressure. Not the centroid again, but the center of pressure, the y coordinate of the center of pressure. Okay, so our last step is that we want to find the distance between here and here, okay? Because for all practical purposes, okay, the, the shaft is going this way, okay? And the gate is going to rotate in this direction. So basically what we want to find is y r take away y c, which is the distance from the, the centroid to the, the difference of the distance of the centroid with the distance of the center of pressure, okay? Which is equals to 0 0.0866. Meters. Okay. Now I I missed the step of uh, making ten divided by sine sixty to find the the y coordinate of the centroid, which is actually over here. So basically, we'll just take this one, subtract by this one over here. Sorry, this one subtract by this one over here. We will get the distance over there. Why is that important? Because that will tackle our second question, which is the moment of force about the shaft. Now, assuming that this hydrostatic force, okay, which is given by this one over here, okay, is enough to open the gate, okay, because you see, the gate will rotate, so if we apply hydrostatic, hydrostatic force here, it will rotate the gate. Assuming that that is enough, you want to calculate the moment that it takes to turn the gate, okay? Well, we just need to do one step, okay, which is to consider a free body diagram, okay, which I will just do over here, okay? A free body diagram of the gate as seen from this angle, okay? Now, I'm going to draw the forces on the gate, no, sorry, yeah, I'm gonna draw the forces on the gate, okay? So we got a vertical force like so, which is the weight of the gate. From the shaft, the shaft would uh, uh, give, apply two forces on the gate, okay? Which we can just label as the X component and the Y co component, okay? But it's fair enough to say that these forces will act at that point over there because after all, it's the shaft applying on the gate. And then after that, we got the hydrostatic force, FR, which is given over here like that. So, if we can just simply take moments about the shaft, okay, we can calculate the, the resultant moment on the gate, which is, shouldn't be too difficult. Resultant moment is simply equals to 1.23 mega newtons, mega newtons multiplied by 0 0.0866 meters, where this 0 0.866 meters is the distance like that, okay? 0 0.0866 meters and that will give us 1.07 times 10 to the power of 5 newton meters so in summary what you can be just found out we have just used the two formulas to find the center of pressure okay calculated the resultant force and using those information we can really um, see what information we can get out from the problem in this case, the problem is what is the moment that it takes to open the gate over here. So drawing this free body diagram, the moment is basically the hydrostatic force multiplied by the distance of the centroid to the center of pressure. That, that is why, again, we need to know really the, the center of pressure and we need to be familiar with these formulas over here. Okay, I hope I have emphasized that enough. Okay, so just a basic problem and example and uh, let's move on to other more interesting stuff.